Hey guys, thanks for joining me to paint an abstract landscape. This is a really easy one to do if you've got some handy wax paper. Okay, here it is drying on my rack and I'm going to show you every step of how I got to this point. So let's get into it. Sneaky blue, start there with some lovely big marks with my large mop brush. Put a little blue down and in the foreground as well. So place it there so that from here on in the colours drip down. I'm going to, with another mop brush, grab a little bit of that orange and just place some in the sky. I do want those to move nicely. So I've got a spray bottle putting it in. I don't really want any spaces, uh, any hard lines in my sky either. So I'm spraying any hard lines. I'm going to go back to my palette and there's this fabulous grey. I'm going to put a little bit of grey into the sky and uh, just tick that as well. And again, I'll spray it with my paint like anything that's a little bit harsh in that sky. You can see the um, wax paper doing its job already. There's this beautiful brown. This is brown matter of his own. Put it on the tips of my mountain. All right this beautiful orange. I'm not going to bother washing it and straight into this fabulous dark grey. it to go under the mountain there. And <laughs> under this one too. Okay, a bit more gravity. I like uh, moving it on an angle. Lovely, I'll put in more of that in this one now. More over there. A big white patch under there so I'm just gonna run my brush over it and uh, that usually gets rid of that white bit there. All right I'm really liking that big um, blue section there in amongst the grey but I might make the grey a touch darker just to emphasize that idea that the dark clouds are coming Shift it this way, make that lovely dark, and I might shift it in the opposite direction. That's better. And then I'm going to spray into that grey as well so it does something more interesting. Much better. Might lighten this up a little so that it's even lighter on this side. A little bit lighter, lighter. That's better. 
I've got an extra towel out to collect all this extra moisture today. All right, I'm going to tip it off. So this painting has been drying on my drying rack and I realised that it was um, sending out all this water at the top there. So I've decided to remove the top piece and it's still really, really wet, but I thought I would remove it now. It's still done its work and um, that way this edge will, if I'm lucky, kind of incorporate itself into being a distant looking mountain. I do want to make a couple of changes now that the uh, wax paper is off. So just with a wet brush, I'm going to wet a couple of spots. I want that to move down more gently like that. There's these little white marks that are just too stark, I think. So I'm just using little bits of clean water to incorporate them. Well, it's great that you've made it this far into the video and it means that you're interested in the colours that I used. So I'm just using little soy sauce dishes and I'm using three schminky super granulating colours and one really, really, really old tube of brown matter alizarin. It's a, a rownie tube. It doesn't even say Dela Rowney. It's that old. It's basically a brown and since I'm about to paint a landscape, though if you're watching now, I've already finished painting the landscape. Uh, so I wanted some earthy colours and brown matter. Alizarin is excellent for that. Ow. Just getting a rag so I could uh, take the lid off. This is Schminky Vulcan Orange. Put bottom. Ooh, whole stack of the binder, gum arabic, is just poured out. But if that happens to you, don't worry. Just keep on squeezing and then the paint will come. It will just make it quite uh, shiny. That's all. Won't be a problem. This is stiff as well. I haven't used these. So, these so. so this is what I keep on hand for this situation where... Lid won't open. It's just a pair of pliers. Blau or Glacier Blue or Bleu Glacier. Super granulating and this one is called Glacier Black. This is just a little plastic pipette. So I'm going to get clean water and add, I don't know, that's about, if in case you're actually wondering, two mil. There you go. It's only two mil, two mil, two mil, two mil. I want them runny enough that I can pour them. Whoa, that gray is a very beautiful gray and i'm going to go so far as to say it's a brown gray get rid of that it's not a blue gray it's not like Payne's gray at all it's a brown gray then here's this beautiful blue glacier blue it looks exactly like cobalt and since i'm using three schminka schminky or schminka some people say schminka three schminka super granulating colors i'm hoping that i get mm, lots and lots of texture on my page this third one is called vulcan orange oh no i said that name already didn't i 
Alrighty, lovely and runny. Just wiping all the excess back in and straight into my ground matter alizarin. The wax paper that I'm using is practically antique. I've had it for many, many, many years, like decades, and I've just been slowly using my little stash up because the replacement one made by Reynolds Foods is uh, really, really, really expensive. My brown near my browns, my oranges next to my browns, my blue over with my blue and my grey in the middle. Now, if you're interested in a bit of colour theory as to what colours I'm using, I love to do this to understand what I'm doing. I've, I've chosen them without um, thinking about colour theory, uh, except for the fact that I went for an orange and a blue. So that's a lovely um, complementary set. So the brown sits in the middle. It's a mixture. And the blue, I'm going to sit it over here with cobalt. This is a quiller wheel. And the orange I'm going to put over there. It's a reddy orange, so it probably sits this side. And it's it's a little bit grayed down. So in fact, they're two mixes. And then the gray, of course, that's a total mix. So with the quiller method, all mixed colors sit inside the color wheel, as in when there's three or more colors that have mixed into it. But you can see just by placing them on a, a wheel like that, that my the basis of my color theory is complementary, that I've got blue and orange and the, uh, the brown is a reddy brown. And then I've got this gray that now that I've mixed it up, I can see it's um, it's a brownish gray. So that kind of goes, I'll move it a little closer to that. I've, but I do have some strong complementary colors uh, going on and I'm hoping that will add to the success of the painting. But at this stage of the painting, I don't know. So if you've watched it this far in the video, I really appreciate you hanging in there. Please give me a thumbs up if you got anything out of the video. See you on the next one. Bye. Thank you.